from that, like the goodwill, the community, I've had several moms that have become patients. One drives from like 45 minutes away and, and just told me, she's like, I'm sending my kids to you. I'm telling all my family because you, like, you are gonna be our dentist. And so it was like, yeah. So there's, there's definitely that aspect. Once you kind of help somebody with something so significant in their life, you know, it's it's an honor that then they continue That's to sweet. trust you with yeah. your, your dental care, so. Welcome to the Everyday Practices Podcast. I'm Reagan Robertson, and my co-host, Dr. Chad Johnson, and I are on a mission to share the stories of everyday dentists who generate extraordinary results using practical, proven methods you can take right into your own dental practice. If you're ready to elevate patient care and produce results that are anything but ordinary, buckle up and listen in. Welcome everyone to Everyday Practices. This is Chad Johnson with my co-host, Regan Robertson. Regan, how are you doing today? Good morning, afternoon, and night. I am doing exceptional, Chad. Excellent. Yeah. So um, today we have a special guest, Dr. Bridget Lervick. And um, Regan, do you mind, we're going to foreshadow a little bit because we'll back up uh, here in a minute, but can you do me a favor and kind of brag on uh, Dr. Bridget for a minute and talk about uh, how she's uh, kind of gone from uh, from X to Y in her journey? Can you kind of give us some uh, details on those stats? Absolutely. Uh, the reason that we have invited Dr. Lervik to be our guest today is because she is a shining example of what it means to be brave, step into your authentic self, and we have the data that follows that. And so uh, one of the things that you'll hear me say often at Productive Dentist Academy is when you take data and you marry it with emotions, you get success. And when it comes to becoming a patient, becoming a client, making a buying decision, if you don't have the data, the hard, this is what it is, paired with the emotion, you can't get that buying action to occur. And Dr. Bridget has really um, honed in. She's become an expert in this one specific niche or niche, which is a <laughs> niche or Shoot. niche. <laughs> <laughs> Depending that on opens your a can of worms, the niche niche discussion. Okay, keep going. So, Sorry. So let's get into the fun data. You guys are going to want to hear from Bridget because in just um, a year, I think it is, she has increased uh, her new patients, 60,000 by last quarter alone. She has basically tripled her new patient production within the last 12 months. Uh, she was getting a two to one return on marketing, and now she is getting a seven to one return, which which we really like to hear. And my favorite stat of all, uh, we know that word of mouth is really powerful and can be your most powerful marketing tool that you have. Uh, Bridget's patient referrals have gone up 20 to one. The data speaks for itself. Uh, cool. When you decide to be brave, understand who you are, why practicing dentistry is important to you, and maybe some surprises along the way uh, at how you can use dentistry in a really unique way to educate people, connect with people, and help them transform their lives. So, so that, that is why said, we are excited to talk to Bridget today. Bridget, welcome to welcome. the show. <laughs> thank yeah. you. Thank you. Happy to be here. That was a lovely intro. So thank you. I hope I live up to it. <laughs> a nice warm welcome for a Minneapolis area, non-warm morning, I'm sure. Yes, I'm sure it's cold there too. So yeah, <laughs> we're bundled yeah. up. So um, you worked with Grand Slammer from PDA, Productive Dentist Academy, Nikki Green. Can you kind of tell me uh, how that went? Like, you know, not all details and stuff like that, but what? how was your experience with that? Uh, what did you learn through, learn, you know, kind of fledgling up th through PDA with Nikki? Yeah, so that was that was one of my best experiences in dentistry. Truly, if um, if I could have moved her whole practice up to Minnesota, <laughs> I, I would still be there. Um, but yeah, I had been in dentistry about five years before I joined her. Um, okay. We were living in Texas, and she happened to be in my neighborhood, and we just connected actually at a Starbucks, um, and I became her associate. And she is just a phenomenal dentist, a phenomenal businesswoman, a phenomenal teacher. Um, so that was truly one of the best experiences I have had in dentistry. And I, I continue to refer back to the way she does things and in, in what I want for my practice. So um, that's how I got introduced to PDA um, and had your great team become my own resource and um, learned a lot of the really valuable skills 
especially verbal skills that I now have in dentistry. So I feel very fortunate for that experience. So when you moved on uh, and you moved back to Minnesota, uh, one of your goals was uh, to get plugged back in. Now, did you start a de novo practice? Did you buy a new one in Minneapolis? How did that work? I bought from a dentist who had retired. Yeah, I was back here about a year and a half, kind of searching for the right practice, kind of filling in, um, covering for maternity leaves. Making it work. As, as, um, non signed into a non compete as I could as I as I looked for a practice close to my house and sure. landed in an awesome practice from a dentist who retired and was fantastic and loved by his patients so it's been a good transition yeah and to kind of uh get to the point uh, so that way we can pivot to the uh you know how this has mattered in your practice um tell us what problem you were having um w- with your firstborn Oh, yes. So actually, when I was um, in when I was living in Texas, um, that's when I became a mom. Um, And so um, as a brand new mom, um, like many moms, I just kind of didn't know exactly what I was doing, knew that I wanted to um, breastfeed. Um, And so as I was as I was kind of going down that journey, um, I was having some significant pain, um, did not know that lip and tongue ties could be a factor and then found my way to a dentist actually in Fort Worth, Texas, um, who treated lip and tongue ties and actually treated my daughter, um, and, um, kind of changed, changed my whole life. Really. So at that point, uh, when you, cause it, it looks from your website, when we were, you know, reviewing some of your data and stuff like that, that you were, uh, you use a CO2 laser. Were you trained at the time on that? Um, so no, I actually, um, well, at the, when I took over my practice, I had done some training, but when I was a, when I became a mom, I knew nothing about lip and tongue ties. Um, so my first introduction to lip and tongue ties was as a nursing mom. I knew nothing about it as a dentist. Um, after that experience of going from incredibly painful nursing to, oh, wow, this is totally different. This is what it's supposed to feel like after having a release. Um, I did seek out training and decided to become certified and learn more and more as much as I could about lip and tongue ties so that I could help moms just like me. Bridget, did I hear you correctly? And you just said you didn't know about the the lip and tongue ties either as a dentist? No. Because that is amazing to me because Mm -hmm. I had no idea. Yep. And if we don't know, then there's got to be so much of the population that has no clue. Yeah. And even, and that's one of the the frustrations that a lot of moms now that I provide this service, come into my practice, it's, you know, they didn't hear about it from their medical provider. They didn't hear it from anyone. And so or worse yet from their, from the medical provider, they almost, I don't want to overuse the word, but they almost gaslight them. No, that can't be a thing. It's right. not really a thing. Really? You know, like, oh yeah. I've heard of, you know, some uh, moms and stuff like that because I do, you know, some laser phrenectomy stuff. Mm-hmm. So the m- moms and stuff, they'll be like, no, the doctor said, no, that can't even be an issue. But I saw, you know, on this mom group on Facebook that I should get this address. So there's a cult following of people that are, you know, thrilled with this kind of treatment and stuff like that. And they'll start sending referrals. So the cool thing is, Bridget, if you've tapped into that, uh, you'll find that, you know, people. So tell me about that. How's that, yeah. that going for you? It's, it's great. So actually one of the best things that I did in my community is actually connected with. So when, when I first knew that I wanted to do this, it was kind of like, how do I figure this out? It's a whole new service. Um, but lactation consultants and chiropractors are a great network because it, yes. it really is a team approach. I mean, I can, I can do a tongue release, but then if that baby can't go and learn how to use their tongue, or if they have some other, you know, tightness in their body that they need, there's the success rate is not going to be as high. And so it, it really is a team approach. So I had networked with lactation consultants, with chiropractors. Um, and so now I've got some really great referral sources in the community that I trust. They trust me. They know if they send me their patients, they're going to have a good experience. I know that when I send the patients to their office. So um, there's a lot of power in kind of connecting with the community and other providers. 
So Bridget, this is blowing my mind. And I usually like to wait till someone's done talking. I just have to jump sure. out of my skin. Two, two reasons why. One, yeah. because my, my own uh, daughter and I had such a hard time for the first six weeks of her life. And she was my firstborn. I thought I was doing something wrong. I mm -hmm. thought it was all 100% me. And I had a great nursing coach who would, would, she even came to our house, but it took six solid weeks. And any new parent knows six weeks is so long <laughs> when you're trying to just nourish your child. Right. And, and you just really um, actually kicked in something extra for me as well, because when my son was born seven years later, uh, I took him to the chiropractor because his little head almost seemed like kind of crooked. I mean, it was, they said it was fine. They're like, oh, no problem at all. And I'm like, well, he seems okay, I guess so. I took him to the chiropractor. He wasn't having too difficult time um, nursing. So I was really, really, really grateful about that. But a few adjustments and his head would look very normal again, but everything in his body relaxed. Like you could tell he was like just flowing, functioning better. And I've mm -hmm. never thought about networking in that way with chiropractors and nursing coaches. Um, you know, together with you and the phrenectomies. Bridget, I think of marketing oftentimes as people feeling like it's just a push of a service or they feel like it is um, being too forward, like mentioning what you do is being too forward. And really, I think of marketing as connecting mm -hmm. people and connecting with a problem and especially something so touching as this where we don't even know it exists. Yeah. So can you tell any, any of our listeners right now, I mean, me in particular, I'm really interested in how you started your journey in educating the community about this after you discovered what, you know, what a great gift it was for yourself. Yeah. So actually, um, I mean, I, I actually sent out almost like little referral kits. Um, so I would send a couple articles and then a letter actually describing kind of what I went through, why I'm doing this service. Oh, so cool. I went through, I, you know, I, I experienced this with my daughter. I know what it's like as a nursing mom. I, you know, have a laser and I treat it kind of as a letter along with a few articles. So if lactation consultants didn't know about it already, and then I actually also sent them a book. So there's a, a pediatric dentist, Richard Baxter, who wrote a book called Tongue Tied. Um, so I actually just bought several of his books and then just sent that as part of the referral kit to different um, practitioners kind of around the area. Um, whether it was chiropractors or lactation consultants. And then from that, um, I mean, those providers are very interested to find somebody who's tuned in and who kind of has a, a personal story. So they would call me, we would chat, and then I started getting referrals from, from other providers too. Wow. So that is a, that when we think of marketing, I think of it as a layer cake. So you'll hear, P, hear PDA say that often. It's like a layer cake. So you've got your word of mouth buzz. You've got, I mean, other than some books and a letter, it didn't cost you anything, no, some right. stamps. So yeah, no. it was something that you could just go out and connect with on a relationship level. What, uh, what have you done with your current patient base to educate them? And, you know, my follow-up question is, what are you doing with the community at large to educate them? Yeah, absolutely. Um, patient base. I mean, we, we have a few things in the office, so it's interesting because I actually, for this particular procedure, it's Wednesday afternoons. So our Wednesday afternoon is baby day. <laughs> so we try not to schedule other patients during that time, but throughout that day, we've got like nursing pillows around. I mean, people see babies coming into the office. So as far as educating our current patients, we haven't quite gotten there, but so many of our patients are like, why are there babies? Babies don't have mm -hmm. teeth. So we always take the opportunity to tell that story to our existing patients. And we've had a lot of good conversations. Um, and it's al almost everybody has a story. It's so funny because it's always, you know, my daughter went through that or my grandson has that. And, and so it's once you start talking to people, so many people can identify with the issues that it causes. Um, yeah. yeah. And then and they don't even realize that there was a solution, but they, exactly. you know, even some grandmas might be like, yeah. Oh my goodness. I would never thought of that, but I, if I would yeah. have been able to have addressed that. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. And then out in the community, it was just interesting when I started implementing this because it was January of 2021. So still in the middle of everything COVID. Um, so there wasn't a lot I could do in person, um, but there are some great Facebook groups. So Facebook moms groups, I'm part of tons of Facebook mom groups. Um, so I will kind of offer, you know, solutions there when I can. And then there's also a great group in my community 
Um, that's like a first and second time mom group where moms can get together. So I did that after my second um, kiddo was born, my son. Um, and so they've been a good resource too, just connecting with them and giving them information to say, hey, if this comes up, you know, I'm I'm a resource. So what I love about this, Bridget, is the the consistency with which you're sharing your message. Uh, I hopped over to your website, took a little yeah. preview at it. Right on the homepage, uh, I noticed that you've got, are you having trouble breastfeeding, which is a crazy <laughs> statement, right? If you're going to a dental website and yeah. then you have, it looks like audio well and discovering why, like you were sharing your story about why you're so passionate. And and the result like that I shared at the beginning, the data with the return coming the way. So do you find that you are picking up dental patients as a result of producing these prodectomies? Yes, yes. So, I mean, the procedure itself is not a massively productive procedure. I mean, it takes me about an hour for the consult. The procedure itself is quick, but we plan about an hour per patient. So, you know, the procedure itself, it's it's maybe equivalent to like two thirds of a crown in our office. Um, <laughs> but from that, like the goodwill, the community, I've had several moms that have become patients. One drives from like 45 minutes away and, and just told me, she's like, I'm sending my kids to you. I'm telling all my family because you, like you are going to be our dentist. And so it was like, yeah, so there's, there's definitely that aspect. Once you kind of help somebody with something so significant in their life, you know, it's, it's an honor that then they continue That's to help you with yeah. your dental care. So you're yeah. building an incredible amount of trust. And then, so then Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, how many days a week do you work? We're um, Monday through Thursday, eight to five. It was a great schedule when I took it over. So, <laughs> <laughs> so the other days you get to do cosmetic dentistry. Is that mm -hmm. right? Yes. Wow. And you're, I popped over to your reviews also. And one of the secret tips that we often talk about is, are you really living that, that true patient experience? Are you really delivering what you say you're going to deliver? Yes. And reading your reviews are so emotionally charged about how much you have helped their family and helped them with um, things that they had no idea even existed and your calm demeanor and your caring demeanor. And baby, uh, you know, my baby was having such a rough time. I was having a rough time. And they're also referencing where they found you in the community as well. So this word of mouth buzz, I feel like it is snowballing mm -hmm. uh, in this past year. So what do you think is going to be your next step in this journey of sharing your authenticity? with everybody um as as far as like continuing on yes well I I hope to make it bigger um honestly we've got like a half a day where we do this procedure but we're we're kind of busting up the seams um and so I would love to kind of you know con continue on and, and open up more with pediatric airway and things like that um but in terms of continuing to tell the story I mean we have several it, it kind of started with one chiropractic office that referred us all their patients. What? And now, now I've got maybe like four or five. Um, so wow. yeah, I feel like it's definitely, I don't know, it's, it's an honor to kind of be a, a trusted provider because here in Minneapolis, there's actually several people who, who also do phrenectomies and it's, it is a great network of people, but, um, like you were saying, it was very important to me as I was implementing the process that we set it up in a way that was comfortable for me, because as a mom, I just had such a great experience. Um, when the, the dentist that, that did my daughter's phrenectomy did it, I mean, there was such great follow-up care. So I really took lessons from that. Um, because I didn't want it to just feel like this, okay, come in, we zap a laser in your baby's mouth and they're gone. You know, it's, I yeah. wanted it to feel like a very caring, thorough, attentive thing, because I knew that moms that had gotten to that point were, pretty significantly emotional and, and needed that extra TLC. Um, and so I, I just hope that word of mouth continues because I think that truly is the best way to, you know, spread the word of what we're doing and why we're doing it. Do you know what that's called? What is it? The little oral appliances that uh, you wear like a sequence of them? Um, yes. You know there's a, yes. Um, there's like the elf appliance. There's like the myobrace. Myobrace. Um, yes. Myobrace, I was yeah. wondering if maybe, you know, like you'd continue into that because yeah. it's oh, going to hit that type of person. Yep. That's my next step. And so I had done some training actually when I was in, in Texas, um, also to do like early expansion, like functional ortho. Um, so that that's totally up my alley. Um, so I, that's kind of my, my CE journey. I think this next year is to get into Good. 
Pedo, Air, Pedo Airway and kind of hit the, you know, six, seven year olds that maybe didn't get a tongue tie addressed that then it caused, you know, more oral development issues and mouth breathing and all that. So yeah, it's a huge passion area. <laughs> if you get a chance um, at the, you know, at some of these next workshops, uh, if we have the speaker back uh, for um, airway uh, management yes. issues, yep. um, it was uh, it was, you know, like really good stuff. Now I've taken a good amount of CE on it, but uh, the, it was um, sleep group solutions. And okay, uh, yeah. man, I like, they, they just laid it out plain and, and, um, and more pragmatic. And so even not on a pediatric level, though, it, it includes that, but just even airway altogether, boy, that was good. So, and yeah. what a good bang for your buck. So I, I yeah. was glad to have set in on that. So just a little plug yeah. for that. Great. But yeah. Well, Bridget, I can I want to take my children to you. And that's what building trust is. I think you've done such a great job and how genuine you're being. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, I have just one last question for you. And what piece of advice would you give to any dentist um, considering this? Uh, or what would you do differently that you could advise them on as they start their journey into looking into bringing phrenectomies into the practice? Um, let me think. So piece of advice would definitely be um, build a community of other providers, because I do think that that number one just helps you get the best outcomes. Um, and then number two also is a great referral source um, as you kind of build things. And then the other thing is I am, I am more of a personality that is aim, 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 <laughs> think about firing aim. <laughs> so it took me a long time to kind of go this direction. And, you know, it, it's always one of those things where the, when I, when I try to give an injection to a child, that's like the most nervous I ever am in dentistry. Well, when I oh, well, had yeah. a baby in the chair and had a laser and was going to be doing a procedure on an infant, there is no words for like the, the level of nerves. And so it, it maybe took me until my like fourth or fifth baby that I treated and my assistant and I went through this journey together. It was like, how are we going to hold the baby? What are we going to do with the, you know, and, and I learned all of it practically in the courses that I had taken, but when you're actually, you know, caring for somebody's baby, it was, it was kind of intense. And so and they're right there watching. Yeah. Yes. Um, no, actually. So how we did it, that's the other thing that I would recommend is have, have a, we call it now a quiet room. It started as our nursing room, but not every mom is coming in wanting to nurse. And so we, we kind of changed our verbiage. Mm -hmm. um, so we actually encourage moms to come to the quiet room and get ready to, to nurse afterwards. So we actually do the procedure. I walled off an operatory that wasn't, we didn't have a door that closed. Um, so definitely have a quiet space in your office where you can maybe do this behind closed doors. <laughs> I really like the implication, but that is also mother centered in yeah. its oh, delivery absolutely. instead yeah. of, Hey, why don't you wait here away from your child while we work on something yeah. really scary, you know, with needles. Yeah. And, uh, but to say, why don't we bring you your baby and you wait here and relax and then you can bond, so you know, and stuff. ready to feed them afterwards. Wow. You know, it's, we've, we've definitely kind of curated our experience so that it, it feels intentionally cared for we we put oh. you know sparkling water and a snack in the nursing room we have Some a white Panera, maybe in here um <laughs> that we turn way up <laughs> so yeah we've definitely kind of intentionally structured the way that we do it so that it's minimal my baby's crying somewhere without me um, yes yeah. And then I try to calm baby down as much as I can before we bring him back. And Oh, that's cute. Yeah. So, but that's always the fun. It's the fun walk through the office, getting to bring baby back to mama. That's right. <laughs> Well, Bridget, I, I just listened to a TED talk where I learned that psychologically, when you get like that intuition, like you said, you are an aim, aim, aim person. Yeah. Uh, I definitely follow that same route as well. <laughs> I've learned that psychologically, you have five seconds when you get that intuitive, maybe I should go up on stage and speak, or maybe uh -huh. I should do the karaoke, whatever it is, you have five seconds to make that decision. And if you don't, the emergency break goes on and you won't do it. And you can lose a lot of time in between being pulled to what your true passion is. Yeah. And 
you got to that point, Bridget, where you acted within your five seconds and you've transformed countless lives in the process. So I just, I really thank you for your bravery and thank you for connecting with your community and helping transform it. You're doing great work. And yeah, we're proud of you. That's awesome. Yeah, Yeah, it feels good. It's it's strange being the dentist that sees babies, but um, it's it's so fun. It is, I would not change it. Wednesdays are like my favorite day. Oh, well, I look forward to when I see you in person again, hopefully at, at maybe September's workshop, we're looking at yeah. bringing in airway again to that. So awesome. we'd love to see you again. And in the meantime, keep saving lives, lady. Thank you. I will. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Join us again in a couple of weeks for a new episode of Everyday Practices. <laughs> Bye, Chad. Bye. <laughs> Bye, Bridget. Bye. Thank you for listening to another episode of Everyday Practices podcast. Chad and I are here every week thanks to our community of listeners just like you, and we'd love your help. It would mean the world if you can help spread the word by sharing this episode with a fellow dentist and leave us a review on iTunes or Spotify. Do you have an extraordinary story you'd like to share or feedback on how we can make this podcast even more awesome? Drop us an email at podcast at productivedentist.com. And don't forget to check out our other podcasts from Productive Dentist Academy at ProductiveDentist.com slash podcasts. See you next week.